Hi, Sally Walker here, your hormone and slow edge expert, and welcome to this blog all about omega-3 fatty acids. So what are they? <laughs> they are polyunsaturated fatty acids and they are part of the essential duo, omega-6 being the other essential. And essential meaning that we don't have the uh, DNA recipe to make these fatty acids, so we have to eat them through our diets. So where will we find the omega-3 fatty acids? Well, this is one we commonly call the fish oils, isn't it? And it will also be found in microalgae and a certain type of omega-3 fatty acids also found in flaxseed and walnuts, that kind of thing, and chia seeds, okay? So what are the different types of omega-3 fatty acids? Well, you have the ALA, as it's called, alpha-linolenic acid. And this is the type which is found in walnuts and flax seeds and chia seeds. But this is not anti-inflammatory. This needs to be uh, converted into EPA and DHA, as they're called, which we commonly call fish oils, okay? So, uh, so yeah, so it is the ALA which is essential, yeah? The EPA and DHA are classically not essential because we can make them from ALA. That we don't do it very well, that's another thing, but we can, most of us can at least to convert some. But it's a good idea to eat the EPAs and the DHAs, so eating the fish oils, eating the microalgae, and eating fish eggs. That's another nice source of the EPA and DHAs. Really good, actually. So, so make sure you're getting those in the diet. But otherwise, fish oils or what we call vegan oils today, which are made from the microalgae, these are a very good way of getting enough of EPA and DHA. So when you look on the bottles or the capsules or the bottles, yeah, of, of the oils or capsules that you're taking, you want to check the levels of EPA and DHA because that is the most important. You want to see how much you're getting there. And, you know, roughly around 450 uh, milligrams of the DHA, uh, of the EPA and of the DHA. So somewhere around a thousand milligrams of both would be a good thing to do. So check those labels and make sure that the product is, is dividing these uh, oils up into their, uh, their separate pits as, as such. So you get to know how much EPA, how much DHA, how much ALA, etc. is in, because it's only the EPA, the DHA is actually really going to work. We will convert some of the ALA, but we don't know how much that's going to be. But generally, can, the general consensus is not much. So make sure you're doing that. That would be an excellent thing to do. So science is, um, I find science confusing sometimes because you're looking at some of the studies and the one minute they're saying omega-3 fatty acids, the next minute they're saying EPA, DHA. Um, and you don't really know what they're talking about half the time. So as I said, it is the oils, EPA and DHA, which are the most important. So make sure you're checking the, um, the labels for these to see how much that you are getting. Just to give you a little bit of a hint here, I'm going to do another little video about the quality of fish oils and what you need to look for. But um, just, uh, just so you know here, cheap doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be okay. So if your fish oil smells or tastes of fish, if your fish capsules give you fishy burps, then this is telling you that that oil is rancid, it's oxidized. And can you please answer this question? Why would you want to eat oxidized oil? You do not want to eat oxidized oil. So if you're tasting fish, getting fishy burps, then you need to change uh, the, um, the, yeah, the product that you're taking because it's rancid. It's not good for you. Happy hormones. Happy life.